Welcome to the Epcotion Adventure, a podcast where we talk about all things Disney, but we're Epcot centered, including tips and tricks, festivals and favorites, and the very latest in our rankings and reviews. But we're still old enough to remember when Epcot celebrated its very first birthday. This is episode 83, Trapped on a Desert Island at Epcot. Or, wait, are we talking Tom Sawyer Island? Oh, too soon? Too soon, yeah. Mm. So now, please remain seated, keeping your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast as we embark on our Epcotion adventure. Howdy, folks, and welcome to episode 83 of the Epcotion Adventure. I'm Rod. And I'm Sue. And this is going to be a really fun one. We've been talking about doing this one for quite a while. This is what would you do if you were trapped on a desert island. And that island was Epcot. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, TSI going away over at Magic Kingdom is probably a little bit controversial still. We hope it's actually not going to go away, but... No, it's going away. It's going away. The new attraction over there does look like it's going to be fun, but... Uh, I'm going to miss Tom Sawyer Island and the river. And I, the I'm going to miss boat. the idea of Tom Sawyer Island. <laughs> well, that's true. It's not like we spend a lot of time over there no. as adults running around, especially through the caves. A little claustrophobic. Uh, a lot claustrophobic. But, but anyway, but happy birthday, Magic Kingdom, as we're talking here. Yes, and, and happy birthday, Epcot. That's why we're doing yet another Epcot. Well, we're Epcotian, of course, but that's why we're doing another Epcot episode now is because tomorrow being October 1st of 2024, is Epcot and Magic Kingdom's birthday. I love that. I love that they share a birthday, but Magic Kingdom always gets all the love on this day. And of course, being Epcotian, we had to share the love with Epcot. So we are skipping forward a little bit and we're going <laughs> to um, change things up so that we can do an Epcot-centered episode. 42 years old. That can't be right. We were there opening year. How is it that that was 42 years ago? Obviously, the math is flawed. Yeah, it must be. Math <laughs> That's is the only evil. answer. Math is evil. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> so anyway. what is the idea of this episode? So we are doing sort of a game, sort of an informational hybrid, I guess. And the idea comes from the Desert Island game. So if you were trapped on a desert island and people always say, like, what's the one book you would bring? What is one luxury you would bring? That sort of thing. So we're sort of taking that idea and putting it into Epcot with the idea that we could also put these these same things into all the parks eventually when we want to do a sort of a fun informational episode. So we are, do we want to go ahead and say what the categories are? Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about that. We're going to do two rides because you know, it's Epcot and we love the rides. So yeah, we're going to do two rides. Other than that, we're going to do one table service restaurant, one quick service restaurant, or QSR as the kids call it today, <laughs> one snack, one non-alcoholic beverage, one alcoholic beverage, because again, we're Disney adults, so we earned it. Don't we did. Ju don't judge me. <laughs> One show or entertainment location, and one souvenir, which these are going to be fun. I've got some interesting ones written down. We'll see what Sue comes up with, and we haven't seen each other's yet. Well, so and the other stipulation fun. to that uh -huh. is that we're going to take turns starting so that if Rod says something, I cannot repeat it. We can't have repeats. So we're just going to kind of throw that little wrench in there so that we aren't just agreeing with each other the whole way through so that you are getting a little bit more information as we go along on alternatives for what some of the best things are. So some of these in will our, not be a surprise to you if you've listened to our podcast. Yeah, in our humble opinions. <laughs> well, yes, of course. As humble as that is. <clears throat> and, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and be thinking of what yours are because, of course, we want to know in the comments. Let us know what your favorite things are. So why don't you start us off with your first desert island ride at Epcot? My first... Ride. If I were on a desert island and that island were Epcot and everything else ceased to exist except for these things on my list, my first ride would have to be living with the land. I agree with that one. It's, it's not on my list, however. I am surprised. But Well, because um, I knew you is, were going to write it down. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I did that with a couple to. too. It, but it's going to depend on, on which one of us gets to that category first on a exactly. couple of these. <laughs> but um, this is a slow-moving boat ride in the Land Pavilion. We talk about it a lot. We love it a lot. It is literally the most relaxing thing you can do at Epcot and stay awake. 
So <laughs> <laughs> you go through the greenhouses at Ep- of Epcot, you see how they grow the plants, how they uh, do the crops and the trees, and you see tips that they do from things that they've taken around the world. They show you how they harvest the food for the actual restaurants in Epcot. It's so cool. We love it. It's about 10, 15 minutes, probably more like 12. Right in the middle there. Yeah. And then at Christmas, they zhuzh it up with some Christmas stuff. That's actually going to be starting very quickly here. It is. And I love it. And during all the festivals, every festival, they'll put up little signs that say, hey, this ingredient is featured in this dish for this festival booth. And I love that because they, the chefs actually do request from the people who run the greenhouses. They request from the agriculture team, we're going to need this ingredient. It would be really cool if you grew it in the greenhouses. And of course, they have to have some lead time in that. But, <laughs> but I just think it's really cool that they do that. So certain spices and things that they wouldn't normally grow, they can grow for that festival, knowing that they're going to need it for a dish. I love that. And it's one of the last remaining of the edutainment type old school Epcot attractions. Yes. And it goes hand in hand with my first one, which is Spaceship Earth. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a feeling that both of those would end up on the list somehow. But Spaceship Earth is a slow moving omni mover dark ride that goes through the history of communication with it's had several different narrators over the years, Vic Perrin and Walter Cronkite and Scar. <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy Irons. Irons. And, of course, currently, uh, not Madam. <laughs> not a Madam. <laughs> um, she is a... Uh, Dame she's Judy an Dench. M. <laughs> she's an M from uh, James Bond, but <laughs> Dame Judy Dench. Remember how easy it was to learn your ABCs? Fact the Phoenicians. They invented them. I love that. And it is the symbol of Epcot. It's in the geosphere as you walk in. But it had to end up on the list because it is the quintessential Epcotian adventure in Epcot. And the other last remaining vestige of that sort of original edutainment. Yeah, it really is part of what the Disney company wanted for Epcot. It's not Walt's vision. Walt wanted the city. Right. (laughs) But at least when the park was designed, it was designed designed with that edutainment kind of Walt Disney touch in mind. And And I love that. Walt would have loved Epcot. Oh, he would have. He really would have. All All right. right. Ride number two. Ride number two. Did you want to go first on this one? Oh, sure. My second attraction on my desert island list is every mom's favorite ride, Soarin'. Ooh, good one. And the reason being is because it's relaxing. I love the music. I listen to the music constantly because it puts me in a very peaceful state of mind. And it is one that I could ride over and over and over again because I have. (laughs) (laughs) And I just love that attraction. Soren is a hang glider style attraction, but you're seated. <laughs> it sounds scary. It's not. It's not. The highest you get off the ground is about 40 feet. So if you do have a fear of heights, you can ask to be on one of the lower rows, but it lifts you up in front of a large scale movie screen and shows you scenes from around the world. It originally started off as Soren over California at Disney California Adventure out in California at the Disneyland Resort, and it's since spread around the world. There's now Soren at Epcot at Shanghai Disneyland, and at Tokyo Disney Sea, along with California and Florida. And they are all the same, unless they're playing that original over California. But otherwise, they are all the same, except for the very ending scene where you will end in the location where you actually are, which I think is cool. So at Epcot, you actually end over Spaceship Earth coming down. Old school Spaceship Earth, too, with the fountains. And yes, the, yeah. and without the lights. Well, that's, yeah. They're going to have to change that eventually, no. I guess. I hadn't even thought about that until just now. Interesting. So, Sue, what's your number two? (laughs) My second ride on my desert island is going to be Frozen Ever After. I love this ride. It is sort of a Pirates of the Caribbean style boat. So it's, again, slow moving boat ride, but there are a couple of uh, twists and turns and surprises in there. You do have one small drop. But it follows not the movie of Frozen, but sort of in between Frozen and Frozen 2, where Elsa is throwing a party at the Ice Palace and you get to see all your favorite characters from the films and you get to hear all your favorite music from that first film. And it's really endearing. It's very cute. Even the queue is cute. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> to go to Oaken's shop. I love that. Yeah, if you get a chance to hang out in Oaken's shop at all as the queue moves through, make sure that you're watching that window in the sauna because it's really funny. Yeah, I have to say, though, that uh, Elsa's a little rude. 
She invites you up there. You take the time to climb up to her ice palace. And as soon as you get there, she sends you away. Yeah, it's a little rude. She, it is still one of the best dark ride moments of all time. I do too. But it's a little rude. It, yeah. it is a little rude, but she respects our introvertedness. And, you know, she says hi and sends us on her way. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> a good point. But there um, were no hors d'oeuvres or anything. I don't know. Weird. <laughs> There's ice. Go get some shave ice. And there are newer versions of this ride that are bigger and better all over the world now. And eventually this one will probably get an update as well. And I would think so. It still has the projection faces, which are <laughs> kind of hit and miss and a little creepy. But um, it still would make my list. It would be my second. All right. Well, I guess it's my turn. It's going to be your turn. And, and we're on to table service table restaurants. Table service. Now, this is a hard one because Epcot is full literally full to the brim with some of the best anywhere theme park restaurants you will find. This was a tough one, but I'm going to go back to old school Epcot, which I just, well, I'm a, I'm a carnivore, so I'm going to go with Le Cellier at Canada. It's a under the ground steakhouse. It's literally in the cellar of the very tall building in Canada, which you don't even realize how tall that building is until you walk down to Le Cellier and look up. It's got maybe six stories. It goes Probably. way up. Anyway, it is a traditional steakhouse with some of the best sides you'll ever find. It is not inexpensive. It is expensive, including for lunch. They do not have a lunch menu ever since... When did they make those changes? Way back a then. A long time ago, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, if you want to go in and just get snacks, <laughs> this is not the place. No. And no breakfast. However, they do have very good steaks, amazing bread service, and their cheese soup is... Oh, my gosh. It, they serve a variation of it during several of the festivals from the Canada Festival booth out front. It's not quite the same, but it's similar enough that if you cannot get it in the restaurant, look at the festival booth and see what kind of soup they're selling. Because a lot of times it's a cheese-based soup that still is yummy. The one at Food & Wine is the one from inside. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, but at it's Food only at Festival. Food & Wine. That's yeah. right. That's right. I remember that now. And they do during Food and Wine, no, during Garden Festival, I think it is, where they offer the steak as well, or is that Food and Wine Festival? That's Food and Wine, as, food well. And wine as well. Yeah, okay. yeah so, they are a hit for that one for sure. That's right. So if you want a taste of La Cellier and you're there during Food and Wine Festival, look at the booth. Otherwise, make a reservation, go in and have a steak and tell them Rod sent you. <laughs> they won't know what that means, they have but no you idea. can tell them anyway. No, yeah. Just to say, <laughs> I just want to see how many people do that. Okay. okay, Sue, what would be your Desert Island Epcot table service restaurant? Le Cellier is a great choice. That would probably also make my list, but I'm going to go a little out of the box. I think my favorite table service is actually actually San Angel in Mexico. I've said that before, but I'm going to take a leap and I'm going to say if I had to choose one, I would choose Shikisai. Oh, good and choice. And this is sort of going out on a limb because we have not gotten to experience it yet. But it's on our list. It is on our list. Mm. It is the new table service restaurant in Japan. Um, we talked a little bit about one of the other ones earlier, which was Takumite. And these are two different restaurants. Takumite is a very pricey, very long experience, very exclusive. Shikisai, you can just get a reservation for like a normal person and go in and spend a normal amount on food. But it's Japanese food, which we love. Sushi looks incredible. The uh, ramen looks incredible. Everything about it just looks completely up our alley and it's all seasonal which i love they celebrate the seasons there's different festivals that go with each season in japan and they mirror those at shikisai I, this is so high on my list i can't even tell you so this will be happening soon i know the next time we go to epcot we're gonna have to make it happen but i'm just gonna go way out on a limb pick a restaurant we've never been to but that is the one that's going on my list now we've been to tokyo dining which is the one that Shikisai replaced. Yes. And so... And we've been to Teppanito, and we've been to Katsura Grill. Like, yeah. we've been to all the others. Oh, and even the little walk-up uh, dessert one with the uh, shave ice. Oh, Kakagori. Kakagori. Yummy. Yeah, we love them all. So uh, it's it's probably not going too far out on a limb because we're pretty sure we're going to love it, but Shikisai is definitely going. All right. Your turn to start. So what is your Epcot Desert Island quick service restaurant? All now, a quick right. service restaurant QSR is a walk-up. This is going to be the places where you can just walk up and get things and go eat on top of a trash can because it's trash can table time. That's Epcot, how we do things. Is, yeah. There is no shame in eating on top of a trash can. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> it is a long respected tradition. <laughs> so I'm going to say my go-to QSR, I had a couple written down because there are some really good ones, but I'm going to go with 
Les Al Boulangerie Patisserie in France. Ooh, such a good choice. Oh, they are known mostly for their pastries, of course, because France. So they have amazing croissants and they have incredible tarts and they have all those great pastry items. But they also have incredible quiche, incredible sandwiches. They have just a whole plate of cheese. Like it's, It is so good. Everything we've ever had there is just impeccable. We've never experienced everything because there's a lot to choose from. It always looks very, very busy. It always is busy, but the line moves super quick because it is a QSR. You're just going through the line, picking your thing and paying at the register. So don't let the long line intimidate you. Give this one a shot. It is in the back of the France Pavilion. If you are looking at the fountain, go to your left. It's over on that side, all the way to the back. And it's one not to be missed. Great breakfast spot. They open early. One of the few places in World Showcase that Mm. opens a park opening. Great place to get quiche, which is one of those things that you don't think about when you're at a theme park. Really good breakfast option. So good. And you can get baguettes for under five bucks. Yeah, an entire baguette for five bucks. And it is huge. It is so shareable. Grab a little thing of butter or not if you're rod and don't do butter on your bread. What? (laughs) No, it's just bread. You're supposed to eat bread. (laughs) Not, not bread and butter. That's weird. Who ever thought of Who that? Who would do that? That's crazy. <laughs> but either way, it is delicious and a great snack. Well, my Epcot Desert Island quick service restaurant is Sunshine Seasons in the Land Pavilion for two reasons. One, it has amazing variation. They have great breakfast. They have great lunch. They do close early. They're not open for dinner. So if you're going to go, you need to go usually before 5 or 6 p.m. because they close early. Just remember that. <laughs> However, they have sandwiches, and they have pastas, and they have things that are seasonal, and things from the land pavilion, from living with the land. But they also have a ton of seating and lots of air conditioning. (laughs) Fantastic place to go uh, when you first get in the park, if you want just a quick breakfast, just a grab-and-go kind of thing. It is quick service, but there's a ton of seating, unlike a lot of the quick service locations that really don't. Seasons is my desert island Epcot choice. That's a great one. And pro tip, their steak sandwich is better than any quick service restaurant has any right to have. Yeah, it's good. It is so good. And shareable too. Yes. So when that is available, I highly recommend that. And they have really good Asian dishes too. That's amazingly too. For where they're located, you would think that China would have better at the walk up there. However, Which Lotus Blossom is fine. It is for maybe egg rolls and things like that. I do really like their pot stickers. And their orange chicken is good. All that's, right. a gr- that's a great choice. I love that one. That was actually my alternate in case you got to go first on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and Seasons is kind of one of those places, along with Lace Hall. We hit both of those every time we go to Epcot. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, my turn to start. Oh, um, no. You're going to take it. <laughs> I'm not. I think I'm going to surprise you with this one. Believe it or not, I'm not going to choose the one I know you're going to choose. Because I know not. you're going to choose it. I'm going to choose Fish and Chips from oh. Yorkshire County Fish Shop in the UK Pavilion. Great choice. Because I know what you're about to say. Because, yeah, I think everyone listening knows what I'm about to say. But yeah. tell us about the Fish and Chips. The Fish and Chips <laughs> is a walk-up outside location. This is part of the Rose and Crown When you walk up, you will smell the fish coming from either France or Canada. You're not going to miss this place. And that's pretty much all they have, fish and chips. (laughs) And it's some of the best you're going to find, really, at Epcot or at Walt Disney World. Yeah, agreed. And it's also portable, so that makes it a great snack as well. And if you want, go right around to the other side of the Rose and Crown, and there's a walk-up bar where you can grab a beer or a mixed cocktail, mixed drink, and take it down with the fish and chips and enjoy a very... Nice, leisurely lunch. Yes, great choice. I am going to go out on a limb, except not at all. I'm going to say what everybody knows I'm going to say. If you've been listening to us at all, I will continue to beat this drum. And my favorite snack in all of Epcot, and it will be joining me on my Epcot Desert Island, is the street corn. While you're there, get me one. Okay, Okay. you got it. Thank you. Because I'm not sharing. This is the elote at La Chosa de Margarita in Mexico. It is not the esquites. It is not off the cob in a little cup, which you can eat politely with a spoon. This is the stuff that you have to attack like a carnivore, even though it's not carnivorous. (laughs) Wait. (laughs) I hope it's not carnivorous. (laughs) If the corn is eating you, there's a problem that uh, even more than, um, yeah. (laughs) Then we've got issues. 
But even though it is not a food for carnivores, it is something that you have to attack like a carnivore, like a wild beast. And because it is messy. on the cob, it's going to make a mess, grab a bunch of napkins. It is worth every bite. It is delicious. It has perfect seasoning and spices. It is grilled. It is covered in crema and yeah. cotilla cheese. It is just so, so good. It's been good every single time we've gotten it. I just can't, I can't stress how good this stuff is. So if you like street corn at all, please do yourself a favor. Go to La Choza de Margarita in Mexico. It's on your left as you enter the Mexico Pavilion because you are coming in the correct way from... From World Showcase. From wor- no, no, no. Into from, World Showcase. Sorry, into World Showcase from the hub, basically, of Epcot. Yes. So, and uh, we have to say it's outside of the pyramid. It's not inside the pyramid. Yes. Yeah. Very good tip. Yeah, it is right on your left as soon as you enter. Are you sure it's not cause... left on your right? <laughs> no, it's definitely right on your okay, left. Good, okay. Don't miss it. They also have lovely margaritas. They have the ones out of a machine that you can get um, layered or individual flavors. And they have some that they actually do make right there. So do yourself a favor. Get the snack. It's so good. All right. It is your turn to start. So what is your one non-alcoholic beverage that would be on your Epcot Desert Island list? Well, I know what you're going to say. I don't think you do. Oh, well, one of us has to say well, it. Well, go ahead. So I'll just, I'm going to go ahead and say it then. Because, again, a drum that we continue to beat. But at any of the Joffrey's carts, you can get the delightful iced shaken Jamaican. It is a cold brew that is, the coffee is flavored with, I believe it's caramel and vanilla. We like to add an extra shot. I do extra caramel in mine. Rod does extra vanilla in his. Uh, I add a little bit of cream. Okay, I add a lot of cream. A lot of cream. (laughs) And I like to add one of the brown sugar packets, and it is absolutely perfect. And you get this at the location outside of Epcot, if you're me, Or where do you like to get yours? I love the one outside of Epcot, too, because there's no reason you shouldn't make that walk with a shaken Jamaican in your hand. But my favorite, for absolutely no reason, my favorite Joffrey's (laughs) location is the one in World Discovery, which is basically right outside Test Track. So if you're coming out of one of the shops right there, or you're coming out of Test Track, or you're coming out of Guardians, Guardians, Mission Space. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's the one that's right there. And again, no particular reason. I just love it. It used to be a very quiet corner of the park, and there's a lovely bench in the shade of a tree that I loved. That's no longer a quiet section of the park because Guardians is right there, so it's very popular. But it's still my favorite Joffrey's. Don't know why. Just is. All right. So mine is going to be getting tea from the Joy of Tea in the China Pavilion. Really? Yeah, it's we don't do it that often, but it's always refreshing, and they have hot and cold teas, and they also have alcoholic versions with some of the most creative names I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and uh, Tipsy Ducks in Love. That's the one. <laughs> it's just a little different than the places that we normally talk about, and I wanted to make sure and point it out, because it is a very unique location. It's quintessentially Chinese, and has just amazing Joffrey's teas, which I just think is, I just love that. It's so different than, you know, the standard Coca-Cola or something of that nature. I love that. That was actually my alternative. It was? Because I was assuming you would take uh, Shaken Jamaican, and I wrote down the lychee bubble tea from Joy of Tea. I actually like like it without the bubbles. I don't enjoy the tapioca boba. Tapioca! Tapioca! Which uh, it has, but you can get it without, and it's delightful. That's it. That's awesome. I love that. Well done. Well, thank you. And now it's your turn to go first, and we are up to alcoholic beverages. Oh, drinking around the world. Here it's hard go. to pick just one. It, it really this is. This one was hard. They have some excellent drinks at Epcot. Well, I'm going to choose, and this is odd because most people don't think of going into a department store for alcoholic beverages, but <laughs> I'm going to choose getting sake at Mutsukoshi Very in nice. the Japan Pavilion. Now, it's been closed for a while. I don't know if it will be back, but back prior to the closure in 2020, you could go get sake samples and entire bottles at Mitsukoshi. Hey, Disney, if you're listening, bring it back. Or probably not Disney, Mitsukoshi, if you're listening. (laughs) Bring back the sake tasting. It was amazing to be able to taste and buy sake from Japan where you're not having to go to an Asian market of some sort. And you have someone there who's knowledgeable telling you about what you're drinking, what you're tasting. Yeah, it's a rice wine, and it is very unique in flavor. And we should say that you can also get it hot or cold. That is true. Which is um, different kinds are made to go different ways. There's clear and cloudy. There's different varieties. 
So if you aren't unfamiliar with sake and want to be familiar with sake, this is a great way to do it. Yeah, very good tip. Awesome. I am going to go very close by to Japan, and we're just going to head right over to Morocco. And we're going to go to Oasis Sweets and Sip. It's right outside the Spice Road table. You'll probably see the little display of all the baklava there, which is also delicious. But we're not talking about that right now. (laughs) So the drink is the frozen mint tea. You can get this just on its own. It is delicious on its own. It's so refreshing. But this is the alcoholic version. And their alcoholic version is to add Bombay Sapphire Gin, which is literally my favorite alcoholic beverage on the planet. So adding it to that frozen mint tea is the perfect, light, refreshing, so, so delicious sip to walk around the world with. That is my favorite. I would say I agree, but I don't like gin. Anyway. Everyone likes gin. You can be wrong. That's all right. (laughs) All right. Just a matter of taste. Yeah, some people have it, some people don't. Oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> okay, right. All right, so it is your turn to start. So what is at your Epcot Desert Island, your favorite show or entertainment? This one was super easy for me. I am going to go to Japan and say it wrong. I'm. <laughs> it is going to be <laughs> Matsuriza, and I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. I'm so sorry to anyone who speaks Japanese. But this is the women who play the taiko drums, and they are phenomenal it is so so wonderful to just sit there if you can find some shade it's kind of tough in the japan pavilion right in that open area there but you can hear them all over world showcase they are fantastic so talented it's absolutely worth taking a few minutes and just stopping to watch them they are just phenomenal well mine okay first of all don't judge me i'm gonna judge a little bit i can already tell my mine is (laughs) off kilter Okay, I, I said it. Rodney. I want off kilter back. We all do. They're they're gone. They, not only are they not they there anymore, up, but they broke I know. up. <laughs> all right, I'm not going to choose. I'm I sure would they're try, all friends. They're no way. They're not friends at this at this point. They played together for over 17 years at Epcot, and uh, and all we over miss the country. You guys. We really do. We saw them in Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma, a couple yeah. times. Yeah, oh, miss off kilter. They were at the Canadian Pavilion. Like I said, for 17 years, and they are now gone, and please get back together and play again. Anyway, okay, so in that case, what I'm going to choose is the new character meet and greet, then, at Communicore Hall. Oh, good one. And the reason I like this is because you can go in and actually see three different characters at the same time, which is now how they do it over at Magic Kingdom as well, at Pete's Silly Sideshow, where you can go through one line and see three different characters, one at a time, but the murals behind them are Gorgeous, old school Epcot. I've mentioned this in several different episodes recently. Cumicore Hall as a as a thing is blah, but the character meet and greet there is beautiful. And getting to see Mickey and Goofy and Donald is worth it every time. And those murals are, like you said, they are so old school Epcot. They're so old school Disney. And those are done by an artist who has a collaboration with Disney. His name is Joey Chu. C-H-O-U. Oh, yeah. He's his fantastic. Stuff on shirts. He's, so, he's the closest thing to Mary Blair, I yes, think, right Yes, he now. was very inspired by Mary Blair, and you can see it in his art. And those murals, oh, so good. I'm so glad you mentioned those. Those are fantastic. All right. Oh, my turn? We um, are go- doing a souvenir. You don't do a lot of shopping, so I'm really curious what yours is going to be. What would your one souvenir that you would take to a desert island from Epcot? Well, I'm assuming this is a cold desert island. Uh-oh. So way back when, and I don't know if they're back or not, but in Northwest Mercantile in Canada, they had the long one-piece pajamas, and they had a red flannel one that I really wanted, but I would go back and buy one of those. Very and nice. And have that for my winter at Epcot. <laughs> for the, it's, instead of an island, you're, you're doing the Epcot iceberg experience. That, exactly, yes. exactly. Some warm PJs <laughs> from Epcot. You'll never know what you're going to find at the Canada Pavilion at Northwest Mercantile because they do change the Canadian souvenirs out all the time. But it always seems like they have at least one or two of those long underwear, union suit, onesie, whatever you want to call it. it, it they just look so cozy. It would they be really do. fun to get those. That's a really good answer. I love that. That's a little different than saying, I want a plush. <laughs> right. I want a Mickey. No. Which I those are those. acceptable as well. Yeah, but you and I growing up with Disneyland and Magic Kingdom and Disney World have tons of them. So. Also true. Plenty of those. 
Well, for me, it's hard not to say a lounge fly because they always do seasonal lounge flies. And Epcot is where you can get them with figment on them. Oh, the current one for Food and Wine Festival? Oh, he's so oh. cute. It's, it's so stinking cute. And I just realized I don't own any lounge flies with figment on them. You've got, uh, <laughs> what, 50, 60? No, I have like, currently seven. <laughs> seven more than I own. But <laughs> I'm a boy, so yeah, okay. And they're all spectacular, and I love them they so are, much. And they are, and they're like Mary Poppins carpet bag. You can open that up and put in 50 different things, and they all fit. It's it, weird. It is amazing. They look so tiny, and yet you start packing that thing full, and it just goes and goes and goes. So I would, in all reality, I would probably choose whatever the festival figment lounge fly is that would be my answer fantastic i it doesn't even surprise me you chose a lounge <laughs> fly because they really are great little backpacks I mean, they are and yeah. they're they're comfortable to wear they're easy to lug around because they are small but they fit everything and they do run a little pricey they usually run between about 75 and 90 depending on the design but you know for a collection that's not too bad and i would get that at the creation shop because that's where it you're going to find most of the Epcot logo stuff. Well, folks, that's our Epcot list for getting trapped on a desert island. What did we miss? What did you put on your list? I'm really curious to see. Put it down in the comments. And one final time, happy birthday, Epcot. Happy birthday, Epcot and Magic Kingdom. And Magic Kingdom. <laughs> Before we go, we'd like to give a big thank you to our theme music composer, Jason Patrick Rowan, whose music is licensed through Pond 5. And of course, thank you, Phoenicians. Thank you, Phoenicians. And don't forget to rate, review, like, share, and subscribe. It really does help other people find us. You can find us on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and wherever you listen to podcasts. The Epcotion Adventure is a $1,000 brunch production and a proud gold member of D23. Thanks for joining us today for episode 83 of the Epcotion Adventure. I'm Rod. And I'm Sue. And we'll see you in line. Bye. It just does my heart good to get... That's, I'm off the rails on that. A little bit. It was a nice thought. Yeah, let's, let's take that back. Okay. Stop. Reverse that. <laughs>